and welcome everybody to week 13 of our course. Uh, pretty exciting. We have three chapters left before the final exam. One thing to note at the onset of this lecture is the fact that you still have uh, a huge project out. Your Paducah Chiefs Baseball Club uh, project will be due in two weeks. Um, so make sure that you're seeing that. You're responsible for calling four different uh, companies based in Paducah, Kentucky to try to sell advertisements to the Paducah Chiefs Baseball Club, which is a summer baseball team uh, of college players. So the prompt is on there. If you have any questions as you're leading into it, uh, please let me know. But note that I will be calling each of these companies afterwards to make sure that somebody has reached out. So you can't just make it up. Um, but you need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to get those uh, to, to try your best to do this, to, to make a sale for that. Because if you do for each sale, I'm going to give 10 bonus points for the project. So this week we're going to jump into prospecting. So if you think through this semester, we've been talking all through about, you know, what a sale is, um, how you can make a sale and then the entire sales process. We talked about obtaining commitment. Uh, we talked about communication. We talked about all these things. But this time we're going to talk about prospecting, which is chapter 12 in your book. So with prospecting, here's some of the key terms that you need to know. We've talked about several of these throughout the semester already, especially customer relationship management. So some of these, uh, most of these should be fairly familiar. As you know, there's not, not a very big chapter. So We'll kind of brush through this information pretty quickly, but prospecting essentially is um, the way that you find, you know, people that you're going to potentially sell to, and then eventually where your customer base is going to come from. So uh, they're not just names, they're not just numbers or email addresses, but it's someone who fits three different criteria: somebody who has a need, um, somebody who has the financial cap or capability or capacity. And they also have the authority to buy. So these are all the three uh, criteria that are needed for prospects as you're going through. You're looking for these people. Again, someone that has a need, somebody that has the financial capacity to purchase, and the authority to make that decision. So process of identifying or contacting businesses and individuals in order to create a pool of qualified buyers is prospecting. Uh, and prospecting is a great thing because uh, as a salesperson, it gives you a place to start. Um, it's awesome coming into a business when they already have qualified leads. And we're going to talk about what qualified leads are exactly. But um, when they already have a pool in place, it's much easier than being the person who's trying to develop those prospects. I've been in, in both situations. Uh, one, like in the United States Olympic Paralympic Committee, where I had to find all of my prospects and all of the businesses and the, and the entities that I was going after. And then on the flip side, uh, starting in the Huddle Up group, uh, my consulting firm, we already had quite a bit of a database built in. It was really just fine tuning that and, and going out and finding more business. But uh, again, if you can have a prospect plate or a pool of prospects in place, it's much easier than it is to try to create that. But we're going to talk about how you prospect and, and, and what that's used for. But really, when it comes down to it, prospecting gives the salesperson a better chance to sell uh, because they fit. They already know that these people fit this criteria. And it also replenishes the appointments needed to sell. So in order to make sales, you have to have appointments and you have to find appointments from prospects. So let's talk about the different stages of the lead process. Um, the first are qualifying leads. And just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, a lead is a name and a contact inform and contact information for a potential buyer. Um, and we talked about, again, the three kind of qualifying factors of a prospect. Uh, but prospecting is really just finding, um, identifying, contacting businesses to create a pool of qualified buyers. So Qualifying leads is the process of trying to determine if a lead meets certain criteria. We talked about the three criteria that, that you need to be a prospect. Uh, essentially, we're looking for the same thing in terms of qualifying people based off of their affinity to purchase, their ability to purchase, and then their willingness or their authority to actually purchase. So that's qualifying leads. Um, classifying leads basically just means that you're categorizing leads into different categories. Um, you know, and it's important to mention through here that in terms of the sales funnel, that the first stage are leads. Um, and once you've generated those leads, 
you're trying to qualify those to make sure that they're prospects. And once you've qualified these people as leads, um, you qualify them as prospects rather after you find out their leads, you qualify them as prospects. And then eventually as the sales process goes through, they become customers. And as we have mentioned through many weeks throughout the semester, it's much easier to retain current business. It's much easier to retain customers and clients than it is to start from the beginning of the sales cycle and try to take a lead, turn them into a prospect, and then ultimately into a customer. So as we're going through that, the different kind of classifications of classifying leads, uh, the first is a hot lead. So a hot lead is a prospect who basically has contacted the sport organization proactively and is seeking to buy tickets. So think of inbound ticket sales, as we talked about at the beginning. Uh, these are people who are coming to you to make purchases. This is always the best. Anytime we call it free money or, or house money or, or free business at this point, because if you're in sales and you get somebody coming to you, you don't really have to go through much. You just have to say, all right, how many and, and when? Um, and, and they kind of give you what they have in mind. That's always the best business to get. Um, and you think about how businesses used to be with storefronts. That's really what they were looking for. People walking in off the streets um, to be able to come to them to make a purchase. Uh, a warm lead is uh, somebody who probably is familiar with the organization. They're familiar with probably the products or the services that you do. You know, for example, these are people who have already, you know, been in contact uh, before. Maybe this is somebody who uh, has attended a game before. And now um, you think that they might be a good lead to be able to come back to a game. Um, you know, somebody who has already been reached out to and has shown affinity to be able to purchase uh, and, the, you know, the authority to purchase, but maybe they didn't in the past um, or maybe that they have in the past. And so you're looking for a repeat business. So that's a warm lead, as you can tell, a little different than a hot lead because you're still attracting this person, trying to attract this person. And then a cold lead, which is simply what we think about and what scares most of us for sales is the prospect, uh, prospects who the seller don't know much information about. Um, but, you know, this is the, you know, the phone book approach where you're literally just reaching out to somebody cold. Um, and trying to figure out if they're worthy or not of uh, of purchasing and they have the ability to do that. So three different types of lead. Again, the hot, which are people coming to you, the warm, which are people that have, you know, shown affinity or maybe they've come to a game before. And then you have the cold leads, which is basically, you know, starting from scratch, you know, people that are approached by reaching out via emails or phone calls, cold calling, et cetera. So let's talk about how you generate leads. Um, you can generate leads in a number of different ways. Uh, the first and easiest, you know, we talk about uh, past purchasers. So repeat business. Repeat business is the best way to generate leads because these are people that already know who you are. They've already purchased. And so hopefully it, they've had a good experience and they've seen the affinity, have an affinity rather, and, and they are easier to get back through the door. So those are the first past purchasers. Um, through CRM systems, so customer relationship management, we've talked about CRM systems throughout the semester as well. Uh, these are crucial for any sort of sales organization or sales realm of any organization. You know, it essentially allows employees to take all the information collected from any touch point into a very single, easily accessible database, which really provides a kind of a full picture of all the information that you have about these people, whether it's their name, their email address, their phone number, their organization, how many tickets they've purchased in the past, where they've purchased them, so that you can start to see rather, you know, their spending tendencies and how they're engaging with the organization. You know, if somebody's reaching out or somebody's purchasing tickets once a year for the past five years, the chances are they're probably going to do the same for the sixth year. But how can you talk to this person and show that you have that information to maybe upsell them or maybe get them to sell or to purchase a little bit more um, than they have in the past? Or is this just going to be somebody who, you know, is purchasing once a year, regardless of what you do? Both are, are fine, um, but it's knowing that information is knowing the information specifically on your prospects that can really kind of impress the people and, and give them the opportunity to really make the most uh, out of a sale. So. That's with a CRM. So referrals is another. We talked about that too. You're basically getting people to sell for you. You're using people to get to prospects. 
Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that the person is selling for you, but they're at least taking the sting out of the cold call outreach. They're giving you a hopefully qualified prospect, uh, qualified lead that you can then go out and say, hey, so-and-so asked me to reach out to you or you know, even if you don't have to do that, at least there's hopefully, you know, some sort of potential there if somebody is being a referral, but it's always less scary. And again, I know I've talked about this in terms of my basketball agency all the time is, you know, hey, if I can have somebody to bridge that gap into the door just to get that door open, then I know that I can bust it through. Hey, I've talked to so-and-so you played with him last year at this university um, you know, he said that we should, uh, we should chat, or I know that you're looking to play next year. So how can we, how can we, uh, bring this all together? So referrals are always great. Um, social media is a huge one, as we've talked about, you know, social media is everything these days, you know, it's all over the place and it's not going anywhere, certainly. So, uh, there are a number of ways that people can, or the companies can search for individuals and for businesses throughout social media. Most people have a social media presence now. So, uh, it's important, you know, LinkedIn is obviously a good one for business tools. You know, you can search people by companies, by their titles, uh, by location, you know, where they're at, you know, what sort of company size that they have, what industry and what position they have within that. You know, you can simply search, um, you know, sales associates or sales people within certain organizations, and it's going to return back uh, people that are present on those situations. So, that's all great information. Um, you know, a lot of those things will have likes or interests or hobbies and things of that nature too. So you can really try to figure out um, who's who has an affinity and, and where these where these people might come from. Online research is certainly another one. You know, Google things like Google Analytics. If you're not familiar, um, you can essentially companies can pay more to show up top in terms of Google. Um, you can be the smart search or the top search. Um, so that's really, uh, really a good way for people to, you know, to, to have or to generate leads and for people to or for businesses to sell is uh, by showing up, you know, on top of different, you know, different websites such as Google. Uh, purchase lists. So purchase lists are what you probably maybe you've never heard of. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, this was something that was uh, a, a unique concept to me when I was first in school. So maybe you haven't heard of it, but essentially companies will put together certain information um, to sell to companies so that they have qualified leads, you know, whether it's, um, you know, in my space, whether it's uh, a list of college basketball players, names and, and information, whether it's, um, you know, a list of companies within certain industry, such as, you know, I work in convention visitor, or convention visitor bureaus, sports commission. So all sorts of what we call destination marketing organizations. So there are plenty of lists out there that you can purchase or have a membership to, to give you access to all those organizations, their websites, and then contact information associated as well. So purchase lists, and you're going to pay quite a bit, but you're basically purchasing the ability to find qualified leads and to find prospects, whether rather than having to do it yourself, which as you can imagine, takes a lot of time and can take a lot of effort too. Uh, email is certainly another way. So targeted email um, is one that you can see, you know, there are a number of things that go along with that too. You know, if you've ever purchased at any sort of a store, you know, you'll sign up, they'll ask if you want to sign up for an email chain. So getting people to uh, generate leads through emails, I know I get hundreds a day uh, and I need to unsubscribe from quite a bit of them, but I, chances are if you've purchased online, which you probably have, you're getting a number of those emails too, especially this time around uh, year with all the Black Friday stuff, with all the you know holiday sales going in. There's a number of uh, number of different opportunities there. And then lastly, you know, similar to referrals is just your personal network. Um, building personal network based off of a number of different things. You know, whether it's the people that you know, whether it's uh, your social media pages, um, whatever it is, it's kind of personal networking and. And finding people at events, finding people at the grocery store, finding people at, you know, church, you know, whatever it may be. It's just kind of the personal connection that you build. Um, and we always say ABP or ABS. So always be prospecting or always be selling. You never know uh, when you're going to run into business. And certainly, you know, you think of, you know, the old timey being on the golf course as a place to sell to make business. It's certainly true. You know, it's true about people like to do business with the people that they know, the people that they interact with. So by being at restaurants, by being, you know, on the golf course, by being in 
you know, at games or whatever it may be, just by being in social settings where you're not necessarily um, choosing to be on or, or in a place of business at that time. Um, sometimes it's a little better in terms of trying to find people that are, are, are not feeling like they're being sold to, but by you being there and you sharing what you do, um, that's where that always be prospecting or always being selling. doesn't mean that you actually have to be out there cold calling and, and, and selling all the time. It just means that you need to put yourself in situations where you can have that personal network to hopefully help you out. So in summary, um, selling is easier with a pipeline of qualified leads. That part is really easy. You know, would you rather try to sell to um, people that you know or people that you don't know, right? Or do you have a, rather have somebody tell you who uh, to target or would you rather have to go and, and reach out that information, find that information uh, for yourself? So selling is certainly easier with the pipeline of qualified leads. Prospecting takes time. We talked about that. It takes time, it takes money, uh, but when it's properly developed, it can certainly make the difference in a successful sales salesperson and an unsuccessful salesperson. Really, really important there too. Prospecting is every bit worth the time and the investment. Um, if you're fortunate enough to be in a big organization where you can purchase lists or or have somebody do it for you, you know certainly that's great. If you're not you know, still take the time. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing. You don't have to completely prospect before you reach out to anybody. Um, the way that I always do it is I will spend some time prospecting. And then while I'm going through that prospecting list, I'll go ahead. And if I find a lead, I'm going to go ahead and send them an email, right? Or send them a, a text message or, you know, pick up the phone and call them, whatever it may be. So I'm going to make sure that I can do that um, as I'm going through to make it less of a commitment, but also so that you're always prospecting and then kind of always selling ABP, ABS, right? Uh, utilize different methods to generate leads. Again, we talked about the different things through, you know, whether it's purchase lists or online research or social media or referrals, you know, there's so many different ways to prospect. So make sure that you're using different methods to generate leads, just to make sure that you're being all encompassing and giving yourself the best opportunity to be successful. Um, and then as we talked about throughout this entire you know, semester, it's much easier to maintain current customers than it is to gain new customers. That's just the facts. Um, it's always easy to get this, to keep the same people there as it is you know, to attract new people. And it just goes to all the in information, all the process, all the education that you have to share with people that are new prospects. Uh, very rarely will it be an easy, easy, easy sell where you can just jump right to the end. And if you are, if you're, you know, not taking the time to uh, take people all the way through the process, a lot of times those are people that are not going to renew and they're not going to return your business. Uh, so that's that's not necessarily a great thing. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. You know, in terms of the sales funnel that we talked about, you know, basically you are taking leads. Um, to prospects, to customers, and then hopefully you're keeping them, you know, as customers and you're getting the customers to refer people as new leads, uh, which will eventually hopefully become prospects and then ultimately customers as well. So thank you for taking the time. I uh, hope that you found a lot of benefit out of this particular chapter. Prospecting is everything when it comes to selling, just like I've said for most of the chapters, but really it's just, there, it's an all encompassing uh process. So you need to make sure that you're not missing out on anything. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, notice that the companies that you're assigned to present to or that you're going to be trying to sell for the Paducah Chiefs Baseball Club project, uh, these are all prospects uh, that we've that we've validated and that we've qualified. So you're already in good shape. You don't have to do that process uh, this time. Uh, but you definitely will in the future. So um, definitely uh, make sure that you're paying attention to all of this. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great, or have a great rest of your week.